finally, to conclude our unit on energy metabolism, let's look at the balance of photosynthesis and respiration. Here is the equations for photosynthesis and respiration, written with a reversible arrow. So if we go from left to right, where we start with carbon dioxide and water, and make glucose and oxygen, this of course then is what we've just talked about, this is photosynthesis. But the products of photosynthesis are then the reactants for respiration. Now let me put in a couple of qualifiers. This is true for aerobic respiration and this is oxygenic photosynthesis. Now we know from the geological record that we had to have oxygenic photosynthesis being invented first to produce oxygen and only after oxygen began to accumulate could we get organisms that could now use oxygen for aerobic respiration. But just like there were alternative forms of respiration, respiration using alternative terminal electron acceptors besides oxygen, uh, before aerobic respiration uh, evolved, there are other forms of photosynthesis that did not produce oxygen called anoxygenic photosynthesis. And we will talk about that in class. But for now, uh, oxygenic photosynthesis and aerobic respiration are the predominant forms of photosynthesis and respirations on um, Earth. And they are responsible for carbon and oxygen cycling, global carbon and oxygen cycles. The balance, they, uh, as long as they remain in balance, we will have uh, a long-term steady state <coughs> carbon dioxide and oxygen levels in the atmosphere. Both of these processes, oxygenic photosynthesis and aerobic respiration, feature chemiosmotic ATP synthesis, meaning we have ATP synthesis driven by a proton gradient across the membrane, and ATP synthase in both cases is pretty much the same. They're both carried out in eukaryotic cells in, or in eukaryotic cells, both processes are carried out in organelles with endosymbiotic origins. 